I've been traveling to these parts of China for more than 20 years. What I love about these places is how they make me feel closer to nature. It always feels like a breath of fresh air that cleans my lungs. The simplicity of people's life here is so refreshing. Most of all, the biggest reward of these excursions is that I've made many friends. Coming to these villages is a bit of a journey, but it's all worth it. Every time I arrive, I have the whole village welcoming me with a big feast. This time, I'm more excited because my daughter Mara is coming with me for the first time. She has heard about my adventures for many years. I'm happy that she and Sandor get to experience this great hospitality. We are on our way to Qinfen, a village of the Dong ethnic minority at the southeast end of Guizhou province. We drive through hills carved by rice terraces and dotted with wooden homes. Guizhou is one of the most demographically diverse regions of China, with ethnic minority groups comprising more than one-third of the population. One of these ethnic minorities is the Dong people who inhabit Qinfen. Signs of China's modernization are clearly approaching these rural areas, but people's lives are still largely governed by agriculture and food production and still very much anchored in tradition. In visiting the Dong people of Qinfen, we are hoping to learn about their traditions as reflected in their food, and specifically their ancestral practices of food fermentation. We've been told by my mom's friend, Xiao Luo, that the Dong people have a long tradition of fish and meat fermentation, and that they can show us how to do it. First though, we need to stop for a quick fish shopping excursion along the river that runs through the valley. It's not really your typical fish shop. We're buying a few kilos of Li Yu, a breed of river carp. After loads of splashing and flopping around, our fish is all packed up and we're ready to go. Arriving in Qinfen, it feels as if the whole village has come out to greet us. We're invited to the village chief's house and welcomed by a delightful chaos. We're promptly seated at a low table and the women start laying out our welcome lunch. The food just keeps coming. There's fried tofu, sticky rice, bright yellow omelets, steamed duck, even a plate of crispy fried crickets, a common protein here. But the main specialty is obviously the fermented fish, on you. The village women keep bringing their own homemade versions of the fermented fish, each a little different. We chop it with scissors and pick at the flaky cured meat around the bones. It's lovely, well-preserved, sharp, and spicy. The meal is accompanied by bowl after bowl of Nuo Mi Ju, alcohol fermented from sticky rice, a strong and delicious brew that makes us feel pleasantly tipsy. Looking around the room, we notice that most of the people surrounding us are elder women and children. This is typical in small rural villages as younger generations go to urban centers for work, leaving grandparents to take care of the little ones. By the end of the feast, we feel confident that our visit to Qin Fen is off to an excellent start. We are among people who produce nearly all their own food, and we already notice how ubiquitous fermentation is in this. We are told that our hosts will show us how they ferment fish, on you, as well as pork, on route. The first step in the preparation of anyu is to clean and salt the fish. Each carp is opened lengthwise like a book, cleaned of its entrails, and cooked.
coated uniformly with salt on both sides. I always love to watch people with experienced hands at work. The Dong style of filleting is very different from what I learned as a sushi chef. It's an elegant and simple method that keeps the whole fish in one piece. I want to give it a try. Working with other people's knives and systems can be challenging. However, the biggest challenge for a lanky, chair-conditioned American is the ubiquitous squatting position in which all chores are done here. I'm told to keep all the entrails in a separate bowl since we're going to eat them for dinner, and of course I obediently comply with the instructions. I am a big fan of dinner. The fish is salted, and we can move to the pork, which requires a similar preparation. The quality of the meat is extraordinary, lean and tender with a thick layer of smooth white fat. Salting is generally the first step in the fermentation of meat and fish. The salt draws water out of the meat, and simultaneously salt absorbs into it, so the texture of the meat firms up. Removing water starts to limit what organisms can grow in the meat and slows decomposition. The salted fish and meat are left to drain for three days before proceeding to the next steps. With our fish and pork put away, we're free to start preparations for dinner. The viscera we removed from the fish are sautéed slowly over a wood fire, allowing their complex flavors to develop. A few slices of ginger are chopped in to freshen up the mix. The meat slowly acquires a toasty brown color and starts emanating a deep earthy aroma. A handful of scallions are cut into the wok, and the carp offal is finally ready to be served over steamed white rice in all of its livery richness. Three mornings later, we go back to the pickling. The base for both anyu and anru is steamed, sticky rice. The rice is seasoned with lots of red chili powder, chopped fresh ginger, flour peppercorns, and salt. Fermented rice, jun yang, the byproduct of rice alcohol, is also mixed in, along with a splash of the alcohol itself. All the ingredients are mixed by hand until they become a sticky orange paste, perfect to adhere to the surface of the meat. Both the pork cubes and the fish are first coated with a layer of chili powder. Then each cube of meat is coated with the rice mix, while the fish is stuffed and folded. We're quite surprised when a couple of empty soda cans are brought to us and inserted into the pickling jars. We're told that this is needed to create a support under the meat so that it won't sit and soak in water that will be released as it ferments. In pickling and in life, one really never stops learning. We stuff the meat and fish tightly in separate jars, filling them up to the top. Over the course of many months, the rice will slowly break down, producing organic acids that will in turn preserve and add flavor to the meat and fish. This simple process has enabled the people of Qinfen to enjoy meat and fish all year round without refrigeration or preservatives. Fermenting fish and rice like this offers insight into the history of sushi and traditional preservation practices around the world. This is certainly one of the most fascinating preparations we've encountered on our journey so far. Our visit to Qin Fen vividly illustrates just how relevant and alive fermentation practices remain. The rhythms of life here revolve around fermentation, and we can't wait to see what other processes they'll show us.